What's going on guys? Today I'm going to walk you through how I built my onboard air system for less than $200. Before we go out in the truck, I just want to show you the wiring diagram that I just quickly drew up on how to make this system work. So the way the system works is when I flick the switch, the air compressor will turn on till it gets to 100 psi and then once I start using it, it will turn on when it hits 80 psi and go back up to 100 and then shut itself off. The way it does that is with this Vi Air controller system. I picked this up for $30 on Amazon and I think this is the easiest way to do it. You can build it yourself with a relay and a presser switch and the 12 volt connectors and all that, but for 30 bucks, it's a lot easier just to do it this way, my opinion. So what you have to have is a 30 amp switch service. So however that switch is powered, it needs to have 30 amps coming off of it to the Vi Air system. That turns on the relay to get the whole system going. Now my Ford came with all the Zerli upfitter switches, which the first two are 30 amp and then the second two are 10 amp. So I hooked up switch number one to the controller and then you have to run a power from the battery to the controller and then you have to ground it out. You can ground it out on the frame but I grounded mine out on the battery because I had a better connection and the pump ran better when it was grounded to the battery than it was to the frame. And then from the Vi Air controller, you have to run a power to the compressor and then you just gotta ground out the compressor. I grounded the compressor out back to the battery because it ran better that way. And then there's a, a pressure switch built into this. So the one I bought, and they come in different varieties, but the one I bought is 80 PSI turns on, 100 PSI turns off and I bought a Harbor Freight air tank which I'll show you and then I bought a couple of hoses and fittings. The hoses and fittings could cost you maybe 20 bucks if you do it right. I kind of screwed up so I spent a little more but that's alright. So when I turn on auxiliary switch number one, it turns on the relay, it reads the pressure setting, it knows it's not at 80 and therefore turn on the pump until it gets up to 100 and then shuts it off. So let's go out in the truck and take a look at it. So here is the system. I got my Harbor Freight tank, and then this is the Vi Air controller slash relay. That's where the presser switch goes into that tells the system to turn on and off. And then all these wires are labeled. It tells you to connect to positive trigger. So this one is going to the stick one. It's going to the battery. This one goes to the switch. The black one is the ground, and then the white one is the power for the compressor coming out of the system. So now I'm in the truck. When I turn the key on to the on position, wait for the dinging. When I flick switch number one, you can hear the compressor turn on. Flick switch number one off, compressor turns off. So if you look at these clusters of wires up here, you got this thick red wire, that's actually a 10 gauge. And then here's my ground, which is also a 10 gauge. I ran them down the bedside underneath, so they are right here. You can kind of see them. They run across the floorboards all the way through. Come up to the battery. Here's the power wire. And then here's my two grounds. The one's for the compressor, the other one's for the controller. And then forwards, there are auxiliary switches. They always have wires running up underneath here. So here are the four that are from mine. This is all hooked up to auxiliary switch number one which is connected to the red wire going down to the controller. Inside the cab, you see you got the clusters of wires underneath here. Here's my yellow wire. There's the yellow wire connecting the outside to the inside. For some reason, Ford runs the switch wires from the switches to here and then you gotta connect from here to the outside. Now the Harbor Freight tank comes with this weird ass header design and it's really designed to be pumped up and then released through this valve. So with this pump came with a connection that screws on to tires and you can actually screw this onto the header and then you have to buy a T fitting and then I bought this little extension so it swivels around and then I have it connected to this blue hose which has this fitting on it and it's a really simple system so all you do is just go in there and flick auxiliary switch one it takes it about five minutes to fill this tank up to 80 psi and then you're good to go and then the switch will automatically turn it on and off so that's how you build a 200 dollars onboard air system 
in an afternoon. So as you can see from this video, building an onboard air system is really not that hard. Uh, if you have the upfitter switches, it just makes it a little bit easier. But if you buy that Vi Air controller slash relay slash presser switch, it makes your life a lot easier. You can definitely go ahead and build one on your own. You just have to kind of piecemeal it together. I didn't opt to do that. It was worth the 30 bucks to just buy that system. Once I bought that, it clicked together within two hours. I had that system up and running. Hope you guys liked the video. Feel free to hit the like and subscribe button. Leave any comments if you have any questions. I'll see you guys on the next one.